Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to sort through all these crazy Arizona real estate numbers and try to figure out what the heck is going on. And it's now just getting really interesting. Happy Monday, everybody, if there is such a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it used to be, I mean, you, you've watched this, this show. You get on and you go, well, we have 6,000 listings. We've had uh, 4,000 homes uh, come on the market and we sold uh, 3,900 of them. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> So now the numbers are getting interesting. We have 10,400 homes on the market that are listed as active this morning. And that's exactly where we were yesterday. So this is one of the first Mondays I've ever seen where the number doesn't go down because that's when the contracts start showing up. So the listings are going. So the whatever contracts are out there are getting filled by new listings. And uh, Tyler says, my home closed last week. Woot, woot. Did I hit the top? You may be close, Tyler. We're going to look at some numbers now. So see what happens. We had 4,793 homes come on the market the past seven days, of which 3,202 went under contract. That's a difference with a high of 1,591. The blue line meaning the number of homes that have come on the market and the red line number that went under contract. You can see on holidays, volume always goes down on contracts, but it bounces up and recovers back to the base every time. See that? This is 4th of July. This is Labor Day goes up. Christmas, Thanksgiving, it goes up. But then it doesn't really catch up to its base because people are getting ready for Christmas. And here you go. It falls off the map and then it starts along. But look at this. This After this Memorial Day, we started the traditional bounce back up. But it fizzled and it fizzled quickly. And we're down to 3,202 homes under contract, which is not... A radically lower number you've seen where we, we were somewhere around 3,500 but we have more listings coming on but they're not coming on at a swift alarming rate uh, think of it like a bathtub so there's a little more homes coming on and you've got the drain down below which is the homes under contract so they're getting scooped up but they're not scooping them up as fast as they used to so the bathtub starting to fill up a little bit and that's what we're seeing. And we're seeing um, sales, closed sales now, starting to slow down. So that's why I'm saying, sellers, it's time to start being nice to buyers. Uh, and I'm going to give you a few examples here in a moment. But let's take a look at what we're seeing right here. This is sales per month, okay? Um, since the market downturn, we've seen the early dominoes fall. If we were in a non-serious situation, then... There are several middle-ranking dominoes that would not topple, and the early ones would start to stand upright again. But instead, we're starting to see the middle order start to wobble and fall over. Here's one of them, the number of closed listings per month measured on a weekly basis. And what's, what's a standout on this is this is the month of May right here. We're going down, and we went down last year, but you usually don't start your decline until June. And the reason you don't start your decline until June is because these are closings in May, which means the offer, the contract was written in April. In May, we start getting over 100 degrees. Things start to slow down. So when the May numbers come out in June, they're always lower. And when they come out in July, they're always lower. And then they pick back up. But these May closings are considerably lower. And I'm going to compare it to a couple other uh, years here. Um, Smack, smack, Rick, is this the time of year normally you would see a slowdown? Um, not this early. So I'm going to show you, give an example here. Uh, when should I list my house for rent? How many days before closing on a new build in contingency situation? Uh, let me address that in a couple minutes here. Running at altitude, we're seeing a lot of open house signs being flooded with emails from agents indicating they will pay for closing costs. Oh, you mean it's time to be nice to sellers? Well, let's take a look at these numbers, your buyers. Look, so... Here's sales per month. Now, you can see that we went down here. And yes, it is seasonal, but it's seasonal starting over here, not here. So let's go back. I've got 2005 up here, which is that green line. And in fact, you can see that it started to go down around June. Um, I try to ignore 2020 because that was just a train wreck. And if we go to 2018, 2019, you can kind of see these things are all grouped at the same, that sales do start to come down starting in June from contracts that were written in May. Remember, these are closed sales. 
not pending. So these are closed. So in May, you always hear agents go, man, my open house is dreadfully slow. Well, yeah, it's the fir first weekend over 100 degrees. And we start griping and complaining, and it gets slower and slower. And in June and July, it's 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 rough. But there are a lot more open houses out there now, mainly because the houses aren't selling as fast as they were like in a couple of days. They would list them on Thursday. By the time you got the open house on Saturday, it was under contract. Nothing more irritating for people to come in and go, nice house. And you go, yeah, we already have a contract. I went to one in Gilbert this weekend just to check it out. Uh, cool looking house. But we couldn't get a feel for the floor plan. So agents, please, for the love of God, put in those 360 tours so we can walk through the house. Because there was an extra room there. We could not figure out how you get to it, where it was in relationship for the house. So I just had to go. I had to go take a look at it. And uh, it was packed. The open house started at 10. I walked into a crowd of people. I couldn't believe it. And it was in Gilbert. <clears throat> Day's inventory are going up. We're up to 32.2 right now. Um, so that's another indicator it's climbing. And if I put that over to 2005, why do I keep going to 2005? Well, we kind of look like we're trending that way. We're following that number. See that green number right there? Every measurement that we're looking at right now seems to mirror 2005 for some reason. Monthly average sales price is still going up. Okay, explain that one to me. Here's the kicker. If I go here to um, my seven-day moving average, oh, and you can see how many homes, 3,182, reduced their price. A third of the homes that are on the market right now pulled their price back. Um, every once in a while, you'll see one go up. I don't get the math on that. Um, I'm sitting here pretending you can see that chart, but here it is. So 3,182 homes. The other thing that we're seeing, when I read you a number that says there's 4,793 homes that came on the market the past week, there's 3,202 that went under contract, that means that 67% of those homes that came on went under contract. That's still pretty brisk. That still applies pricing pressure. And that's going to continue for a while. We don't know how long or how brisk. Um, so Sherrod says, when should I list my house for rent? Well, any time um, there's still demand for rentals even though we're seeing that number change in some parts of the valley you can find a renter pretty quick depending on where you're at i know in tempe uh, people start really digging for rentals in uh, july because college is going to start so they're aggressively looking for something in july even condos and townhomes and small houses july is a good time to put it on the market um and uh, so that's um, sellers being nice to buyers now. What do I mean by that? Well, in the past situation here, um, people were waiving appraisals, you know, putting in appraisal contingencies. I'm going to offer you 500000 but if it only, if only appraises for four seventy five, dollars I'll kick in the 25000 That's going to go away, and it's going to go away real quick. Also, um, nobody has been asking for a seller to purchase a home warranty for the home. And that's a pretty cheap little offer that sellers can do. And I think you'll start seeing more and more of that. And I think rather quickly, all of these little things are going to do before they lower the price of their home. Now, we've got a third of the homes that are listed lowering their prices now. So that dynamic has changed way beyond what we've seen when things start to get a little soft. Um, but they may be giving you things like, let me help you out with your closing costs. And if you're a seller, you really need to start considering some of that stuff. Um, now is also not the time to scrimp on uh, the buyer commission that you're offering to buyer broker because you're in a more competitive environment. Real estate commissions have come way down in the past two years. Ask any agent. Everybody thinks we're killing it. But the real estate commissions have come way down because you can practically just Go on your front porch and go for sale, for sale, and uh, you'll get your offer. So right here, though, take a look at this. We're still closings over list price 52%. So there are many of you out there, over half of you, that are going to get uh, higher priced offers over your list price. The amount that you're getting over list is starting to come down. You can see here it's like 10000 15000 on the average. So that's starting to come down. Instead of getting 10 offers, you might get three. So it's not doom and gloom for sellers. It's just 
be sharp, get ready to sharpen your pencil, and go ahead and be ready to offer sellers some enticing incentives for them to buy your home because they have more choices. Buyers aren't going out right now and going, well, I got to find something today and I got to write an offer on it today. Um, I did see a lady that said uh, she walked into the open house on Saturday and the guy goes, how long have you been looking? She goes, about a year. <laughs> I just shook my head. Uh, Mike says, our townhome price slowdowns lagging single family. According to the data, it looks like it's not hitting an inflection point. Um, not yet. I'm not seeing townhome prices coming down yet, but I think they will soon. Um, townhomes and condos are the last one to go up in price and usually the first ones to come down. And I'm talking closed price, not asking price. So as people think that they may get more opportunities for single family houses, they move away from townhomes. Townhomes, they tend to go to A, if they just don't want any yard maintenance and they, want, uh, uh, they don't want any yard period, uh, then they go to a townhome. Uh, but then you've got that HOA that's hanging out there that can be raised at any point. Um, are we going to see foreclosures anytime soon? Well, here's the national delinquency rate, first lien mortgages at a record low. Now you see a little spike up here. That's when everybody went into forbearance. So it's still counted as a delinquency. And it came down, 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 down. We're down to 2.8%. So that's a number that has to change before you start seeing foreclosures like you did here in 2008. See how delinquency started spiking up and then just skyrocketed? We're not seeing that right now. And Zillow says that this East Valley suburb is Phoenix Metro's most popular housing market. Congratulations, Gilbert. Zillow Group named Gilbert the most popular market in Metro Phoenix in its latest study that shows suburban home values are growing faster in home values in urban areas. Up 7.6% growth in the first quarter of 2022, said the Zillow report. So they're measuring cities that are 30 minutes fr from the uh, city center and people are leaving the downtown areas and going to the suburbs. And in the Phoenix Valley, Gilbert is the one that seems to be winning that competition. And uh, there's some neat little uh, hideouts down there in Gilbert, uh, uh, Morristown, Agritopia. Um, Agritopia just doesn't look at all like Arizona. Tree-lined streets, looks like Ohio. So it's very interesting down there, and there's a lot of choices. And uh, good, good morning, everybody. So that's what's going on now. Here's what to watch. We're at 10,400 listings today. It normally goes down from Monday to Tuesday by about 300 homes, normally. But... Doesn't look like that's going to happen because we didn't go down from Sunday to Monday. We're going to buck that trend tomorrow. We'll see where we're at now. I'm not on tomorrow morning. I am being interviewed by a uh, gentleman named Dan. Um, he's a lender, national lender in uh, um, Chicago. And I probably messed up his name. His, yeah, his name is Dan Frio. And he's a national lender out of Chicago. And he's going to interview me about noon tomorrow. So I'll... Uh, I'll try to post that in the community tab so you can take a look. He likes to talk to agents all over the country, and he reached out. And I really enjoy that kind of stuff, so I'm glad he did that. Everybody have a fabulous Monday. Oh, wait, got another question on water. You think water concerns are affecting the data versus the econ economic slowdown? No, haven't seen that yet. I've seen a lot of chatter about it, uh, but they're still moving here. The jobs are still here. And, uh, yes, we're very concerned about water, but... I don't think anybody said, well, there's no water in Arizona, so I'm not going. Um, you know, California is probably going to get the hardest first. I'm not a water expert. I, I try to approach the subject, but it's just so complicated. I know that our gover governor went to Israel last week, and he was looking at their huge desalinization plant, which we would probably negotiate to put that something like that in the Sea of Cortez, uh, just south of Arizona. And... Uh, perhaps in Mexico, and work out a deal with them. I don't know, just spitballing. But uh, it's good to see the governor trying to find um, trying to find a water solution. Um, what's your gut feeling for late summer? Balanced market. The data is showing a balanced market. The rate of which new listings are coming on and sales are dropping off is that you're going to see the Cromford Index rocking right around 100 and it's going to be equal between buyers and sellers. I think by Labor Day, the bidding wars are gone. They're out of here. I think for sellers, you're going to have to be creative. You're going to have to really 
price it correctly. You can no longer price it at the top of the market. But keep in mind, your price value has gone up by 50% in two years. So you have to pull it back 10% to be competitive. You're still in great shape. So I really think that September is going to be a period where, barring any huge debacle in interest rates, it should be a good time for buyers. And if sellers are playing their cards right and pricing right, should be able to move it. You're just not going to move it in a weekend. It might take a couple of weeks. It might take a couple of months. We don't know. Folks, there's a lot that can happen between now and then in banking and the availability of credit, overall economic conditions that, you know, I'm not an economist, but if I just look at a little tunnel and I look at these real estate numbers, it it's sending a clear signal based on the velocity of new listings coming on that September by Labor Day, balanced market. Everybody have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Take care. Thank you.